code of your preferred language, and then uh, it all came together as an HTML, and then it uh, was spit out to the to the client, and he had to deal with it. <clears throat> when you build such an application, you collect a lot of stuff in your JS uh, and in your CSS folders because it's all pretty important and you have jQuery as a basis often in, in older applications and then you have, oh yeah, I need this drop down but it has to be animated so let's get this jQuery UI thing and then, oh, the carousel doesn't really work like I want, ah, but there's this third party library, hey, there's a jQuery for that so let's add this to the part. And in the end, you have like 10 jQuery, uh, jQuery things or other JavaScripts. Let's add some other language as well. Why not? Uh, and everything together has to be put into your to your application. Um, you have like uh, 20 scripts uh, in script parts in your um, in your website, and then you have to all deliver this to either your local. Um, Apache or whatever uh, to, to start this, to see your program actually working, or you, even worse, you have to use FTP or something to put it up on a dev server and see it in, in, in progress there, and it's all a pain. The, the development cycle is very slow. Um, the load time is slow because you have all these JavaScripts and, and CSS calls internally. Of course, if you are a really smart developer, you use something like um, the compressor from, from Yahoo. So you put all the JavaScripts in one file and all the CSS in one file, and because it's a pain to call this command, you uh, use a nice shell script uh, making this for you every time you d change something. Uh, yeah, that's even better, right? Uh, so. I hated this, and it wasn't really fun. And uh, of course, I had to deal with it. And I, but I want to. I wanted to progress. I wanted to grow with this. And um, yeah, um, welcome to the future. So if you if you are still here, uh, I have good news for you. Uh, <laughs> um, so. All these funny icons mean something, according to my speaker notes. So let's see. Um, we have all this is uh, a part of what Angular um, makes makes Angular cool uh, for me. Um, and this is the reason why I really love the whole thing. Um, so let's start with that. Um, we have in Angular we have controllers, we have um, two-way data binding, we have um, services that are internally called factories, uh, yeah, well, uh, we have routes, we have uh, view templates, we have um, directives and filters. And uh, on the tools section, we have Yo, uh, which is short for Yo Man, uh, we have Grunt and we have Bower. So who knows everything that's here? Okay, you can go now. Uh, but let's go on. So let's start um, with the with the tools because, as I said, this is what makes the whole package awesome. Um, Yeoman is something that works on top of the tools that I just mentioned here, um, and is uh, basically a, a scaffolding thing. It helps you to quickly generate stuff that is always the same. So it helps you to avoid um, writing the same code over and over. For example, um, create a typical Angular application is done with these three commands. Basically, it's just this, but in order to make it in one ep in one particular directory, you first have to do this. Um, yeah, you just say. And, and you could even leave out the, the um, app part because this is the default. So if you don't do anything, yo Angular, and yo, you have your application. So, and this would give you these awesome features out of the box for your, for your app. So without even doing anything, you just have to do, uh, you, you have uh, the whole scaffolded app, so all directories in the right place. Uh, there are already some 
built-in files, for example, for the build process. You have, um, if you want to, automatic um, compilation of um, CoffeeScript and Compass. You have automatic lint, so you see when you screw up in your files. Um, the built-in preview server with auto-reload is just a breeze. So you start your server, I come to this uh, in a sec, and um, every time you change something in your files that are being watched according to your build file, the page reloads automatically. And also all the tasks you implement there, like linting, like uh, compressing and so on, it's all being done automatically. And this is just great for getting stuff done quickly. Image automatization, we had this in a talk from, uh, of Michael just before. There are cloud services for that, but if you can do this locally as well, why not? I mean, it, it all depends on your use case. Um, um, and yeah, package management, how great is this? Like, no manual download anymore. Here yeah, you saw this download jQuery button. You have this on every library uh, you can think of. You don't have to care about this anymore. You just say, I want jQuery in 1.10 and um, define this in the package and it's already downloaded and uh, it's always in this. Um, and if you, for example, if you say, I want the jQuery UI in this version, jQuery UI would, will know that uh, it needs jQuery for execution, so it will define jQuery as a dependency automatically and downloads it too. So uh, if you don't know what dependencies we have, there's no problem um, because you just need to know what you need and uh, all the rest has been already defined by the developers that defined the package you want to download. So that's awesome. And uh, built-in unit testing as well. Um, with PhantomJS, with its, uh, a headless version of Chromium. Um, so it's being uh, executed without, uh, without a window, so to say, or without visual uh, output um, of the browser, but it executes the JavaScript and you can run through your code uh, as you would in, do in Selenium, for example. Um, so, Grunt, the next thing, is a build tool. And it allows you to define any th sorts of tests, so you can also copy stuff from X to B. Uh, you can rename stuff. You can you can do all, uh, do all crazy things, but these are defined uh, by uh, by default when you do the Yo Angular thing. Yeah, um, you have a grant file. This is here. All the tasks are being defined here, and a few things that are very useful is executing your tests executing the preview server, uh, which runs locally, um, and uh, building your application, which means um, you can define what, for example, maybe it's easier to do um, development in the non-minified version of your code, um, but if you do the minification um, for, for, the, uh, for the distribution, of course, the size of the download will be lower, so that makes sense. Um, but um, you are not limited to the basic tasks. You can do all crazy kinds of things. And there are a, a big number of um, plugins to enhance the capabilities of Grunt even more. So, um, I already touched this topic, Bower. Bower is finally a package manager that you can use for web applications. Um, so, you, uh, I don't know, there are different things you, you know probably from Rails. Um, there are the gem files you can define um, in other, we have a Maven, for example, in the Java world. And Bower helps us to do this only for the front end. You don't need anything else but JavaScript. It all relies heavily on the whole infrastructure uh, Node.js brought, uh, brought to us. So uh, most of the packages you are using are NPM um, packages. And, uh, but they are being handled in the background. You don't really need to know. The only thing is you have to install Node.js, but you don't need to run your server uh, in the end uh, on, on Node. It's just for convenience because it's all being written in JavaScript and thus can be executed by your browser or by your shell easily. So, um, so there's um, a package.json and there are all dependencies. You can also define dependencies that are only useful for your uh, development cycle, 
for example, some uh, things you need for testing. So this, this stuff doesn't end up in your production JavaScript. So um, let's come to some cool features Angular offers to us. Um, we, we have expressions. So we can use um, these handlebars to um, calculate. How crazy cool is this? Very advanced techniques. Um, it's it's very easy um, to to do a bit of JavaScript inside these brackets that get uh, gets executed and interpreted and uh, put out. Um, the same um, is this, which is a variable f um, coming from a controller. I'm uh, speaking about this in a sec later, but you can see uh, it's really easy to to um, put out data you have in your controller. Data binding is um, also pretty cool. Um, we use this for, so who, d who doesn't know really what data binding is? Okay, um, just really quickly then. Um, data binding helps you, you have data in a model, uh, so um, user dot something, um, name, description, email, and so on. And you have um, text somewhere and, and um, ways to, to change this. For example, in this uh, example, we have a text area that is being tied to user description. So once this gets uh, executed, we see um, the list of users being executed uh, over and over. I come to the ng-repeat later. Um, and the description has been put out here, but we have a text area too. And this uh, uh, ties the um, description um, to the model. So when I change the content of this text area and change it from very friendly to very bad, um, it will change here also because uh, Angular is, uh, clever enough to figure out that these are the exact same fields. Um, so whenever the model changes, the reflection, the output of this uh, model will be changed automatically everywhere where, the, where it occurs. So um, this is the two way. One way is uh, I can put out data and the other way is I can change it back and change the output again. So it's a cycle. Um, directives. So we had this uh, ng-repeat um, before in our code. Um, this is a very easy thing to put out uh, things in a very uh, structured manner. So for example, when I want to uh, render a list of users, uh, I have always this list and um, this content. So I only say, okay, repeat this list as many users are in, in this list of users. How they come there, I can explain later. Um, and the, uh, yeah, it will be repeated as often as I have users. Obviously, I just had two users. And we see the result uh, below. And that's, that's the ng-repeat directive. A directive, as you can see, is um, a, th uh, a way to define a certain behavior on a, you can, you can do this for classes, you can do this for, um, for attributes. Um, so you can change the behavior of certain, certain things. So normally this LE would get just pr be printed out once, but with a directive, use all the users there, so it gets automatically repeated. Um, another u uh, directive which comes in very handy is uh, the show directive, it tests the um, predicate that's, that's being defined here. For example, is admin, and only if this is true, um, it prints out the user. And hey, what do you know? I'm, I'm an admin, and Bob wasn't. So uh, in the end, we see only my name popping up in the list. And a bit more complicated uh, is the ng-switch, uh, but as always, because it's a bit more complicated, it's more powerful and useful, so bear with me. Um, 
in the ng repeat, I also define that here is a switch defined on the field user uh, dot name. And what I define is when the user, when this property uh, has the value Stefan Holt, then use the super cool admin PNG. And uh, if it's the if it's anything else but Stefan Holt, then use the normal boring user PNG. And as you can see, uh, I'm all suited up and Bob isn't. Uh, so this works as well. Uh, can I yes? Uh, that's not a value, really. You would have, I think, uh, I, I didn't, but I, I guess uh, you could just use true here and use there is admin. Yes, uh, I just, I, there's just a boring example. I could ma made up something like image sun and rain or something. It has nothing to do with the admin status. Oh, okay. It, yeah, it's maybe a bit confusing. Okay, thank you for this. Uh, I need to change this then. Um, Yes, it doesn't have to have uh, something to do with the admin. It's just a comparison of this attribute with this value. You could also do several uh, switch whens uh, in between. So I could test for Sabine and for whatever. And when this hits, then this will be used. And only if nothing else uh, hits, then the default. So it's a if else, uh, if else, if else, uh, else of and so on, uh, until this is an else. Okay. Um, going on, controllers. So, yeah, now we see some code. Um, what does this do? So we define a controller that, which is called main control. <coughs> Oops, um, I'm sorry. So we define a controller and uh, Angular uh, works with dependency injection. Um, this means um, all the things that you, that you see here in the um, in the function as an argument is automatically uh, introduced into the into the now the controller uh, by name, uh, which is a problem with uh, minification. That's why you can you can define the names before this in a weird array. I just left it out because it's it's a bit more harder to read for, for newbies. So I just made it like this. If you don't minify your code, this works perfectly. Um, so let's see. Um, so the scope is so-called the, the data object that, be, that is being passed automatically to, to your view. So whenever you want to deliver some data, for example, we have here the chapter name and a Google Plus link. Um, Put this in the scope, and you can access this by uh, handlebars, Google Plus link, handlebars, chapter name um, in your view. So this is how the data gets into, um, into your view. And we see here a, a config object. I left this also out because it's just way too long. Um, this is just a static object uh, containing some values that I use here um, because I use it more than once, I define it on top. We can look it up uh, on GitHub uh, later on how it how the whole thing looks. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Uh, the controller um, does some stuff, constructs some data internally, can also query data. We can we come to this in a second. Um, but in general, this is uh, where you do the thing for for the main control, for example, how we wire this all together, it comes later. Um, we just need some, yeah? What is Boomerang? Um, you, you don't know? Okay. Um, so uh, the whole project um, that I that I built, most of the code is copied from, from a project I, I built. And um, the generator I used for that was not the Yo Angular, but instead Yo Boomerang. Um, so it's a, it's a fork of this. Um, it's actually a, a generator for building your your GDG website in a second, for example. So that's why we have a chapter name, for example. So I could do the GDG Berlin website in let's say. 10 seconds because I just say yo boomerang and then it asks me what's your name of your chapter 
what's your Google Plus page number and some other things and the website is done. Yes, um, you're right. It's 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 yeah. It's not on there. Um, you first define how your your app object is called uh, via um, an Angular call. Let me let me show you this uh, later on. Okay. Um, otherwise, it gets confusing because I have to change tabs and stuff. So let's go on. Um, we here use the the Angular model for services. Services are kind of like. Uh, the, the way to, to access um, data in a more structured way. To, this could all just be um, a static array of, of um, JSON, which you could also just define here. It, it all depends on how complex your stuff uh, is going to be. If you just see, okay, I have three things I want to put in a list, put it here. Don't do, make it more complicated than, uh, than it has to be. But if you really, for example, want to query a, a JSON data source like here, uh, it make, makes more sense to, to encapsulate this into a certain service. Uh, in this uh, particular example, we call this uh, myawesomeapp.services. And um, the service is being called JSON data. And what I'm doing here, um, since the dependency injection works by name, I can just say, um, my module, my awesome app controllers, uh, the main controller, um, just needs the JSON data I just defined here, and I can use it inside the scope to fill objects via query. So what query does, uh, it's a factory, so a service, and automatically it, it loads um, this from, from the server, and returns the results into objects, and I, for example, can lock them, which is not really useful for a web app, but for development, of course, uh, you can at least see what happens. Uh, you would do more stuff in your view, of, uh, of course, with the ops object, uh, ob ob object. Um, yeah. The next thing, very important, uh, roots. So, um, You, uh, here's actually, it is here defined, so that was above. Um, you define a, a variable that, hand, that, that contains your app, for example, uh, your example, um, and um, we, you, ha you can split your, your code in different modules if you want to. A module is like a part of an app, but uh, often enough it's, it's a whole app. Um, in this in this example, it, it's called GDG Boomerang, and it uses the sanitize function and uh, a module called UI Bootstrap, which is an Angular port from Bootstrap, uh, Twitter Bootstrap. Um, and then you config uh, some roots, and the roots um, handle the URLs you want to use. So whenever I call, um, so it's really easy to, to, to read, actually. When I call about, or the user calls about, um, use this template uh, and send, um, send the data to this controller to, to handle the whole thing. Um, when I go to news, use this template and uh, let the news controller handle the data. And if none of this uh, is matching, uh, just for for security, so to say, I redirect to about, so I make sure uh, no cases go un, unhandled. So this is my default, and this will be my welcome page then, um, because I make sure uh, this is being handled. So yeah, so you, uh, that way you can define as many routes as you want. Uh, you can, of course, uh, handle the same uh, different routes with the same controller if you want to. You can handle this, uh, different routes with the same view if you want to and with, di with different controllers. So you can mix it all together how you need it and how you like it depending on how complex your, your idea is. Um, coming to your view templates, um, in this example I iterate over, uh, over um, uh, a list of photos called PhotoStack, 
and uh, each photo gets put out in a, in a list and um, we see a link to the photo, have a class thumbnail attached to it, um, put in the source and in, um, a description for the thing and a title attribute. And um, the ng source is uh, kind of important in, in the way that you don't have uh, flashing of uh, unstyled content. Um, so although there's the ng dash before it, uh, it gets um, it gets removed once the source has been loaded. So you only see this object um, until the uh, when when the um, image is loaded. So you don't see all the empty, broken images before. Um, so this is kind of uh, an improvement of, uh, and it 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 looks much uh, nicer in the in the when you use the whole thing. So um, let's go on. Um, a really really nice thing uh, w uh, also is uh, filters. So imagine. I have a, an input, it's almost invisible he up here. So just an, a little input, I call a search text. And then I have a table of search results. Um, and in this table, I um, output all the friends um, I have. Obviously, there was no space for me to have friends, so uh, it's only the source code. Um, and we define a filter search text here. As long as this input is empty, nothing really will happen. So uh, I'll just see all the friends uh, that are put in in friends um, as a table row. But as soon as I start typing in this uh, input and the model register that the content has changed, um, also the binding uh, uh, works that the filter um, starts filtering the list and only um, outputs the friends that match uh, parts of the search text. You can define your own filters which work differently, for example, uh, make it a negative uh, filter. So uh, you want to throw out everyone that starts with ST uh, or something like that, or you can make it a regex filter or something. But uh, the general thing is uh, it's a substring filter and only matches will be displayed. So um, uh, there are, as soon as you start typing, some rows of this uh, list uh, disappear, and you say only the uh, the people that that match the description. And um, once you uh, remove the content from search text, the list is full again. So. Um, what do we have here? Um, so you saw all the filters, views, controllers, and so on. And of course, you could look it up how you write it and uh, start with that. Uh, actually, the tutorial on the website and the, the docs in general are pretty great. Um, but it's easier that way. So you just use Yo again, and instead of just putting in Yo Angular, you could say, I want a root. And I call it my root, um, and then or root 66 if you want to, um, and then you get two files, and uh, there you go. You um, the root should be all already included in your general apps.js where you define the roots, um, and you have only to edit, uh, edit the con uh, the controller and the view to your liking. Also, you can just create a controller. For example, named user, um, filters, directives, um, a service, and a lot more. Um, but I didn't want to go through all the things that you can create. I just wanted to show you that it's uh, pretty easy to use this generator. But just one warning, I, I don't know how bleeding edge you want to go. Um, currently, there are re release candidates for Angular 1.2, but it's not yet released for stable. So the generator produces um, 1.07 or something by default. Um, it's it's all working, but if you need features that are in 1.2, so uh, 
since you're on the beginner talk, you probably don't know these features, uh, so you're not missing it. So you can only start with the yo thing uh, before you do something else. Um, and now I wanted to take you quickly into um, a real-life example you might know, uh, because the website uh, defestberlin.de uh, has been generated with the fork of the yo angular thing, and um, it's also a, a GitHub project. So if you're interested in how this thing looks in the real world, it's like that. So if you, it's the user is devfest berlin and um, there's only one repo right now, which is this one. Um, so, and, and if you're interested, here's the generator as well, and there's a readme how to, how to start with this. Um, obviously, you're not all wanting to create your GDG website, so probably you start with the normal Angular, Angular one. But just in case you want to try it. Um, so I wanted to show you uh, two or three things here before we go. So, uh, for example, the, the Bauer components. Um, we have a package.json, and my eyesight is not that good, so let me... Yeah, uh, it's just let me duplicate the screen now. Um, and now, at some point, uh, and it's better if I if I check this first. Um, yeah, I have a few screens open right now. So this is the the generator. Where is it? Oh, I have it. Yes. No. Damn it. Okay. Let's take this. Uh, now you come up, sure. Um, so, the package.json. Um, yeah, we have Joshua, the creator of the original template uh, in here. Um, but also, uh, it's pretty small. Oh, that's better. Uh, so you see, mostly, uh, we have only dev dependencies. Uh, because everything else is just being built on, on normal uh, Angular. And he also was a bit lazy, I must say, actually, because he could have integrated this with, uh, with the uh, Angular as well with, with Bauer, but uh, instead the Angular stuff is in Lips and I think in JS. Let me see. No, in JS. But let, let's l have a look at the only file that is like custom JavaScript. The whole app, um, the whole website of DevFest Berlin is defined in this. Uh, these, how many lines do we have here? Only 238. Uh, uh, that's okay, I guess, for, for such an important website. Um, so, let's see. Um, at first, we say, hey, we have an app here, uh, Angular. And our app is called GDG Boomerang internally. And because we are uh, very lazy with typing, we call it Boomerang uh, in the code. We could have called it the same. I recommend, actually, to call it the same to not being confused. Um, with this setup, we actually can see the, the roots a bit better. Uh, it r reads a bit nicer. And you see we have um, different handles. And for everything, we put in a different controller just to encapsulate it quite nicely. Um, then we have a, a, a service, but this service doesn't connect to a, a, the website or uh, downloads any JSON. It just provides a gigantic, uh, nah, gigantic. Uh, JSON object with a few config variables, for example, um, for our team website, uh, how our, uh, what our G plus IDs are, um, and some other data you can see on the website. Um, the next thing is uh, the main control. The main controller is if I call the first, not AT, but Berlin, you see I'm immediately on about, and um, this is being handled here because this is very boring, most is static code. Uh, I only configure chapter name, G plus link, the event link, and 
uh, something which is only useful for the um, mobile version of this, that the nav is uh, collapsed because if I close this enough, I have the navigation and it shouldn't be open like this uh, because you wouldn't see anything on your mobile phone uh, if, if the whole menu is open like this. So, um, so basically here we have the chapter name. Chapter name is being used here and here. Um, so normally there would be GDG Berlin or something, but I misused it for a dev fest. Uh, we have some descriptions which are being used from the um, config. And for example, the, the G plus links are being uh, constructed that are used uh, here in the main navigation. Um, also, additionally, uh, we have the, the about controller that handles part of the site. And what we do here is, um, so maybe what's, what's, what's interesting with the site. Um, this site has no real back end. Um, so the, the back end is Google Plus at most. Uh, for example, the big cover, um, is being uh, loaded via JSONP directly uh, from the website, uh, from, from the Google Plus API. So I'm asking, hey, for this particular Google Plus uh, page, uh, what, what is the cover image? Uh, I get the cover image, and if I get it, I put it in, into the scope to make it accessible in the view, and then boom, there we have it. Um, the rest is just static HTML, so there's nothing uh, much into it. Um, the next is uh, the news controller, which is a bit longer, because um, when you um, ask for a certain feed of a, of a page, you have different types of posts, and these have to be handled differently. So you have posts where a photo is attached, you have posts where an event is attached, or just normal posts, and as you can see, there are different views, uh, view possibilities, and we obviously post some pictures on our DevFest site. Um, so this is a live, live uh, poll from our DevFest G Plus page. So we don't have to do anything to keep this content up to date, because uh, as long as we post stuff on Google Plus in our page, this is always up to date. The same with the photos. Um, but this way, um, we, poll we poll different albums from a page. So uh, um, the same as you can have albums in your Google Plus profile, pages can uh, create albums. And what we do um, is create different albums and just say, OK, poll, poll these, uh, these albums. And so we can display them. Um, and so we have a bit, a bit better handle on which photos we can we see under the photos uh, tab? So we just upload some uh, good selection of photos to the to this album, and then we we can automatically see them here without anything. Uh, so no FTPing or uploading or anything. It's just done. Um, these are static links, and the only thing that is quite neat. I don't know if you um, use this. You saw the array of um, of team IDs, <clears throat> and th these are sequential calls to the Google Plus API telling, hey, give me some info about this user, Benjamin Weiss, um, and uh, give me the photo and the name and the link to his profile. And, <clears throat> oh, they don't have the vanity URL yet. Oh, interesting. Because uh, you can see, no, you can't see this, it's super dark. Uh, the Google Plus issued the, last week the, the, the plus uh, something URLs, and the, the API, of course, delivers the correct links. The first few didn't get uh, the, the, the name yet, but most of the others already got them. So anyway, uh, we, have, um, we have a pretty easy um, list. Maybe I, so I, sh I just show the... Um, content, the view template for for this list uh, might be the easiest to understand. <clears throat> it all fits on one page. That's very convenient. 
So I, I used the uh, data for Google Plus link again. This was in the header, and then we have the team list. And uh, yeah, uh, before I show this template, I should show how it's being polled uh, again. Makes more sense. Sorry for that. Um, it was the, la the last one. So it's called con contact control. You can call your uh, controllers uh, to your liking. And what we just do is um, going through a loop of, of the team IDs. Um, and the only thing I had to do here, um, because we are more than five people and Google Plus uh, limits um, uh, the connections to five per second, I had to use timeout uh, to slow it down a bit. That's why the photos popped up after each other. Um, I use a timeout of two, 200 milliseconds, which makes up five per second, uh, for, for one second. Um, and yeah, I'm looping through this uh, as long as we have uh, new team IDs, getting the info about the, the, the member of the team, and uh, pushing this uh, the, the new data into, into a, an array called team, and then I can iterate over this in the view in contact. So um, I just say member and team, and then I can query the sub part of that here, the URL and the name and so on. So I guess um, that's almost it. Let me find a presentation. Yes, um, I guess that's it, yes. Uh, for a short introduction into the magical world of Angular. So, dürfte ich dich kurz bitten. So, are there any questions before you run out? There. Remember the disclaimer. <clears throat> um, is the, ooh, loud. Is this is um, a framework from Google. I thought they would do um, the scraping correctly because you, it's, it seems to be impossible to scrape this or crawl. Because if you search for DevFest Berlin, you don't find DevFest Berlin. If you directly search for the URL, you see handlebar brackets. <laughs> um, interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't put uh, put any effort in, in making this actually visible uh, because we communicated the URL directly. And I only put this together in like three hours uh, on Wednesday. Um, so I even su uh, surprised uh, my co-organizers of this event with the page because I thought, well, maybe it's useful to have one. Um, and it was a good experiment for me to, to try, try out the, the <laughs> generator. So I'm not sure if it's not being picked up because it's uh, relatively young or if it's really that broken. But, but, but as I said, if I directly search for the URL, I find um, handlebar yeah, brackets, I, I, so uh, not, not the real I'm values. I'm probably sure I do something not right there. So as I said, the, there's no real backend and all being generated dynamically, I probably can enhance this. Uh, there might be someone in the audience already can answer this. Yeah, behind you. Um, so Yeoman is basically uh, also a wrapper for Grant and Bowser, or you have to uh, use them separately? No, no. If you inst I think if you install the pack package for Grant, uh, it's grantjs, I think, uh, .org or something, um, I guess the dependencies pull uh, Bauer and uh, Grant as well. To, so then you have it installed, and if you use uh, Yo, um, they also execute Grant task uh, from the start. So I guess it's all being integrated. integrated. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeoman basically gives you default configuration for Grant and Bauer, so that's why. Yeah, and you, of course, can build your own generators, like I already said. Uh, you don't have to use the Anglo one. Uh, there's something else called just your web app, for example, that asks you, do you want to use uh, Twitter Bootstrap, and do you want this, and do you want require JS, and stuff like that. So, and there, I guess there are generators for every 
major uh, library or framework already, and if not, build your own. So if you build the same app over and over, like for example, I can imagine for PhoneGap, uh, you have the same structure of, the, of, a, of an app for, um, for that all the time, so it makes total sense to build your own flavor of a generator and then use this to, to yeah, be, be quicker in the end. Uh, of course, you have to build the generator first, but then you can, yeah. Um, can you tell us what the dollar syntax does exactly? You have dollar scope, <coughs> dollar HTTP, and so on. Uh, you mean... Yes. Um, so the dependency um, injection works really fine for parsing this information. And replacing or injecting the right, uh, for example, the scope object into this parameter. So if you, if you interchange the config and uh, scope, it will still work because it parses the position of this. It's really a very enhanced dependency injector. Uh, and that's why if it's not called dollar scope, it won't find that there should be the scope. Uh, but there's a different uh, there's a different way to, to write this. Let me quickly find this to make sure. So somewhere. Yes. <laughs>
to make it available and understandable, you have to first say in this, oh, sorry, <laughs> in, in, in this array, hey, the parameters actually called uh, scope and root params. So I, run, I first run into this error by just like you would minify everything, and then the Angular app was broken uh, because uh, it doesn't uh, recognize the, the intelligent replacement thingy anymore. But uh, by adding this array around it, it works. So well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's still JavaScript and some intelligent language. Um, <coughs> so you have to be able to. Does that mean if you use the dollar operator that it resolves it within strings too? No, it's really the burden scope. Is the, the dollar scope is something the dependency injector looks for. If you, there are some default uh, things you can include, and some are like Angular modules or uh, add-ons, so to say, you can include, and then you can use them uh, as, for example, dollar HTTP, dollar mock, or whatever. Okay, so it's pretty fine. It's pretty fine in, in the language and the framework with, uh, or in the uh, additional module. Yeah. And inject your own things as well, but the one from Angular start with the dollar. Your own things are not supposed to. Yeah, for example, the config thing you saw in the other example, it has no dollar. It could have done it, but you shouldn't because it breaks sometimes uh, if you choose the same name by accident. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, so, questions? No? Thank you.